And welcome back to the Black and Gold Banner Red. Joining me here today, previewing the track and field team with us, is head coach Dana Boone. Coach Boone, how you doing this morning? I'm good. Thanks for asking. So you got so you you all are going to be taking the track very soon. We're recording this on January 11th, so just in a couple of days from the time we're recording this, you'll be heading up to Gainesville to start your indoor season. How how are things looking as so far as how are things looking so far in the first kind of few weeks of practice as you before you head up there? I think the team overall is looking good. I think if I asked every coach, um, I feel like we had some good fall training and good training over break and that, um, you know, it's now time to see the fruits of your labor and kind of get your starting point. That's what this first meet will be a little measuring stick of, of where our fall training has, has put us and where we need to go from here. Can you talk a little bit about the dynamic between you got you, you 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 coaches because I know you have coach Jackson with distance you have coach Smith with the jumpers and the throwers and then you have every everybody else so like what's kind of the dynamic between you three as coaching do each of you three kind of stick to your areas and kind of meet to talk about it or do all of you each kind of have little inputs in the other um well you know we're always in constant communication with each other even though we all coach different event areas it's still one team um the goal is to obviously win championships and to make it to national so we see each other for sure every monday in a staff meeting and we update each other um and then, you know, um, we get daily interactions. Coach Jackson may be the distance coach, but I always say he's a track coach. And he comes out to my practices twice a week and helps out. The girls always look forward to seeing him out there. He'll help me time and, and things like that. And then you know, I always see Coach Smith at practice because he's got practices all day long with all the different field events. So there's always constant interac interaction between all of us. Um, so we can see with our own eyes as well as communicate about um, the progress of the athletes. Spe speaking of like winning conference and nationals, you guys went back to back last season, getting winning both the indoor and the outdoor AAC meets. You're coming in now to your last season in the American. How hungry are you guys to go back to back one more time to finish it off? I mean, last year was a spectacular year. I, you know, I don't know if that could ever be duplicated. There were so many things that happen, records broken and everything. But obviously, once you win, you want to win again. Um, but, the, you know, it's a it's a competitive conference and we'll have to line up and and um, put in the work um, and accept the challenges from the other programs that I know are going to be ready to to come and, and make a challenge. But I feel like we're going to be ready um, and we're definitely uh, the goal is definitely to defend those titles. Well, Renaya Jones is once again back. It seems like I see her everywhere, considering her edition financial commercial that comes on all the time. She made it to the final in in at, at both an indoor an indoor event with the sixty meter hurdles and then the outdoor event with the one hundred meter hurdles. So I want to ask because she's made it to the final now, at least in the outdoor championship she made it to the final twice what do you think she needs in order to maybe get that little extra bit and potentially take home a win um well we're definitely working on those things there's some technical things that she needs to clean up but um you know she just has to um be able to handle the pressure of the competition on that day and and get it done um you know there's there's talking about things and then there's getting things done. So obviously that's the focus. That's the goal. Um, you know, you put in that work and you you hope they can line up and and run with the best in the country. And she's she's proven herself there um, by making her making the way to the finals each year. But um, yeah, it's time to do something special. So we'll see if this is it. How important has her presence been for this program? Because I don't because I don't think I've seen a UCF track athlete be this universally, I guess, well known slash recognized in quite some time. Yeah, I think you know what she did a couple years ago really opened the eyes of everyone around her. I think she elevated the standard and the work ethic and the vision. Um, she allowed others to dream big um, by her being able to do certain things and making it to the Olympic trials, making the NCAA final those two years ago and being a runner up. I think everyone came back and was kind of like, 
hey, I've been training with her. I can do that too, you know? And so she definitely has raised the bar and set the standard for the program. And I, um, that's exactly what we recruited her to do. Um, so her presence and her, um, her, um, her, all of her accomplishments have, have done uh, tremendous things for the program. And we hope that someone else is, will pick up the torch and you can see some other, you know, by the performances there's definitely more people going to nationals and things like that. So we hope to continue that trend and that someone else will become the next face of, of UCF track and field. Well, one runner last season that I honestly felt like could have got, could have gotten there she was, or if not already gotten there is Latasha Smith. She made it to the indoor nationals in the 60 meters. And I mean, I thought that she, she easily could have made it to the outdoor championships but I think I remember we talked last time and there was a and there was something that came up before the preliminary and that uh, hindered the her and the four by 400 team from going to the to the preliminaries didn't see them so what can you talk a little bit about you know how hungry they are to come back this season uh, uh, this season for both Latasha and the four by four team um, well, definitely, um, yeah, Latasha made it in the 400 in, indoors and, um, you know, yes, we were expecting great things outdoors, but sometimes random things happen. And I had three legs of my relay come up with three different illnesses all at the same time. So they were unable to run individually. We had three people that qualified in the four, in the 400 for that, um, preliminary round meet and then the four by four as well and we just weren't able to line up any of them and run so the the likelihood of that happening was so random and crazy but it did happen um but you know deep down that um you know the team is definitely capable of of those type things so I know that um watching training this year um there's definitely Tasha is definitely putting in the work. Kaya Williams putting in the work. There's um, definitely the opportunity for um, improvement for sure. Um, so uh, the goal is to make it to nationals. And so we'll, we'll see how the season progresses and pans out for these young ladies. Well, Latasha Smith really took the 400 meter by storm. She broke the indoor and the outdoor record for that. So I'm excited to see what she'll do this season. As far as the relay relay team, though, on each one, the four by one, the four by four, I believe you have each have one, each of them have one le runner and one leg that is not with the program before the four by one, Sierra Holbeck graduated. And for the four by four, I noticed that Danielle Bess is not on the roster who was part of the part of the team that broke the four by four record last year outdoor. So who are some, who are a couple of runners that you think we can take up that, uh, that open, open leg on both. Well, that's, that's, that's what my job is as coach. We're, we're still figuring that out. We, um, we lost a, another leg to injury. So we're, we're trying to uh, regroup and recover. So that's what part of this early means early season meets are about um, is, is finding those to step up. They'll have to be a short sprinter that will have to step up on um, and Kyle and Kirk Kirkland's going to have to step up. Um, so we're just going to, we're going to find our way through there um, and see. So if you're asking me right now, I, I can't answer that question. A lot of it depends on watching those compete and um, just seeing what we need to do moving forward. How, so do you think we could probably, what kind of records do you think we could see fall the, this one? Just considering who, you know, who you've seen really kind of gaining momentum coming into the season. What kind of records do you think are in danger this time? You think the four by four again, or are there others? I don't know if the four by four is in danger this year. I'm, I'm not quite sure. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but to be honest, if you had asked me last year about what kind of records, I would have said, I have no idea because as a coach, I don't focus on records being broken. I just focus on getting better. And um, and so that's what we're doing. The records come, you know, through the training and through the competition. But, you know, I don't think any of us have just set out and said, I'm going to go break this record um, or that record. It's been the fruits of our labor and that's what the ultimate um you know the the culmination of all their work it resulted in um so for us the focus is executing the race plan continuing to get better and those um accolades and accomplishments come along with that so 
how much because i've been looking at the because what i had we talked about Renia jones earlier and she's made it now made it to the outdoor championships and back-to-back seasons but one but when you look a little closer ashera collins also did that in mm-hmm. the, in the triple jump so yeah. at, and she's improved she improved on her on her on her finish from two years ago and last season's out, outdoor, outdoors. So I want to ask, like, what have you seen of her this off season? And do you think, and what kind of things do you think we can see for her in order to make that hump and potentially make a top 10? Well, Ashira has um, talent that we have not yet seen. Um, you know, I walked by practice yesterday and was watching her jump and I saw some, some very good things. So I'm looking forward to hopefully, her having her breakout year because she's been kind of teetering on there, but I really feel like she can make that transition this year to becoming an elite jumper um, because she has all the tools necessary to do that. So looking forward to a great season from her um, and just putting everything together. We also have Adrian a- Adrian Adams who ended up breaking the school record in the, di- in the discus throw and made it to the outdoor championship as well. So I want to ask, like, now that she's done those things, uh, what what else do you think we can see from her now, now that she's kind of had that outdoor championship experience? Well, I mean, the goal is hopefully she she can find a way um, to to win the conference in the discus and, and return to the national meet and hopefully, you know, find her way um, into the finals. I mean, you're always looking for growth, um, but, you know, a lot of you know, as a coach, we all believe um, that success is determined by the student athletes. We're here to be guides and and we give them the tools necessary to be successful. But ultimately, it's their mindset and them on that day that um, leads to the success. So hopefully the seed has been planted. She had a taste of the national championship and wants more for herself. Um, and that would be the goal. Yeah, speaking of student athletes having impact, Brittany Floyd who ended up after she transferred and she made it to the national F- outdoor championship for the heptathlon. And now this season, we have high school teammates Natalia Madison and Holly Castles returning as the multis with Natalia holding the freshman record. How important was having Brittany here for Holly and Natalia? And what kinds of improvements could we see from them in their sophomore in their sophomore season? I think Brittany was such a great impact player. Like she, she only had that one year, but boy, did she make an impact. And I, I definitely think she upped the standard and helped them training wise. And um, I think this year you're going to see a new and improved Natalia Madison and Holly Cassell. So I think um, you will um, see just more improvement. Um, They're super talented. Um, They look a little different this fall to me. Um, and in a good way and so I'm looking forward to that's what you know it's it's time now it's time for us to compete and kind of get that gauge of of where we are because you know you you watch things in practice and you know good things are coming so now you just want to see it start to play out I've noticed you you're I'm noticed you're getting a really nice crop of new distance runners this season I talked with coach Brian Jackson about the cross-country season and you know, with Is- uh, Isabella Richardson and Penelope Sosa really, really stand out in mind. But of course, on the other track events, you had Charlotte Crook coming back for final season. You guys haven't had a distance runner make a national championship since the great Anne Marie Blaney back then. So what do you think? Well, like, what do you think it's going to take to get an, a distance runner back to the national championship? And who and who do you think has the best shot at getting it? <laughs> well, you know, that, that's a lot of that's a lot of questions. What what I would like to see for this distance group is like you said, there are some new faces. Um, Lillian Holtery has had a great cross country season as well. She stepped up. Um, so what I want to see from the, the distance thing and the first step is to to make a bigger impact at the conference level. They've done a great job so far. And now we just want more scoring opportunities and, and higher places. And I think they're in position to to do that and and definitely help with this um the pursuit of a team championship this year so uh first things first i think we um continue to compete and improve our um you know our performances at the uh conference championship and then you know um it, it's 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 tough in that distance world but you know they'll they'll continue to grind and i know coach jackson will get them ready um, and we'll eventually get somebody there. Um, we're, we're signing better and better recruits. Um, 
in that area. So it's just a matter of time. So looking at this at the schedule throughout the season, one thing I actually I noticed is that there's a couple of more instances I noticed of you of your of the individual groups going to different meets this season. For instance, that your sprinters are going to be the only ones that are heading to Lubbock for this for the Red Raider o- Open in January. You have of course you have the multis going to Miami like you did last year. The distance going to Georgia Tech in April. So I just wanted to ask, like, what do you what goes into your mind when you schedule when you schedule stuff like this, and when do you did make the decision of okay, like we can only send the, these these athletes here, these athletes here. Well, it's not about only sending these athletes here, these athletes there. It's a more about what's most important for each event group to get the most out of uh, out of the situation. So sometimes when we would go to the Clemson meet indoors, it would be great for everyone, but maybe the distance runners, because maybe some of those programs didn't bring their best distance kids. So um, by the distance kids going to Vanderbilt, um, you know, they, they'll, they'll run into a lot better um competition for for their event area um it's also a great place to jump um at Vanderbilt um I chose to take the sprinters to um Lubbock because the best teams in the country are lining up in the sprint events in Lubbock Texas on that track so we want it to be in the mix as well um so what you'll see indoors is a lot more opportunities where people are going specifically for their event areas to try to achieve the best performances for their group so multis are going to Boston because there's a a good multi up there Um, distance is going to go to Boston we're going to go to Clemson um, as well for the um, for the meet on February 10th and uh, 11th because that's a high level competition for sprints and that'll be the perfect time of the year when you really want to line up and should be ready to go so um and then we have the other meets um as training opportunities to get um reps in or take the week off if we need um need to we have that opportunity to do so so the schedule is set up and thought and with thought that everyone has an opportunity to run um with the competition level that they want to when they need to and also take breaks when they need to as well so Speaking of Lu- of Lubbock, they are going to be your conference mates very soon in Texas Tech. Going into the Big Twelve, do, is going to uh, do you think going to Texas Tech will be able to give your sprinters the opportunity to kind of preview Big Twelve level competition as you prepare to make that move? One hundred percent. You know that's a, I haven't worked there for uh, three years. Um, you know I I know what the track is like, but um, it's a different. Uh, that's a big steep bank over there. It's even steeper than the one that they they run into in uh, in Clemson. So it gives them an opportunity to um, experience the track. Yes, before we join the Big Twelve, because the conference meet will either be at uh, Iowa State or or um, Texas Tech usually in the big 12. So definitely wanted them to have the opportunity to experience that and prepare themselves for what what's to come as we prepare to move into the big 12. I call that a little bit of a revenge meet for Kayla Harris. I, she trans, you know, she transferred here from Texas tech and now she's back from, you know, from, I remember she was competing in outdoor events last year, un- last season unattached, but now she's back for her final full season um have you what what's her kind of see, off season look like and is she excited for the little, nice little maybe revenge trip for love to love it um well we're not going to call it a revenge trip it's just a return to her home she graduated from there i had recruited her there um we're going back and it and it doesn't matter where we run but every every meet's important for her um you know she she's trained um and had a great fall and so i look for good big things for her this season um and that's just part of the journey i probably should have used air quotes right there's um one one thing i i notice about track that's a little bit different from other sports is i noticed that the impact of a conference schedule seems to only really come into play at the conference championship level so I want to ask, ask like, do, how much do you think scheduling for you is going to change when you go to the Big 12, or do you think that it's not really going to change that much, and we'll still see bit, kind of similar events like this, like with you go to, I know you see you go to Gainesville several times, and is that, so how, how much scheduling 
w- w- could you know, change with the move to the Big 12. Well, you're correct about track and field. You know, the only time conference teams really matter is when you line up for the conference meet. Um, you can go to any meet and, you know, the clock is a clock. So um, that's the one thing about track and field. Um, obviously, moving into the Big 12, um, we we hope the schedule will change um, some and we'll, we'll go to a few different places. Um, definitely we'll keep Lubbock in the rotation since that will be a place um, – you know, that we will compete on a regular basis. But, um, you know, overall, um, like I said, a track meet is a track meet. You might make some changes here, here or there. But ultimately for us um, going into the Big 12, it's just we're going to line up twice a year against the conference. So you have the out the out this year, we have the outdoor championship. I noticed that you guys don't actually wouldn't have to leave the state of Florida for for about a month long period from the UNF, the UNF Invitational through the AAC Outdoor Championship to the East Preliminary with Jacksonville, Tampa and Jacksonville again. So (laughs) how how big is it for you guys to have these late season meets and not have to travel as far because you you just have to go down I-4 for the conference title this year and then. These preliminaries just up uh, I-495 in Jacksonville. So how important is that kind of lower travel time for you guys this season? I think, um, you know, there'll be some that'll say, oh, it's so boring. We don't get to leave the state of Florida. And then others will recognize the value of not having to travel as much um, and and, and and embracing the weather that we get that time of year and, and not being able to, not having to miss any training days. So I think there's an advantage to us by not having to, to get on the plane and being able to, you know, um, save on the on the jet lag and the um you know it was a lot of travel going to Bloomington last year and then all the way out to Oregon um but uh you know this year Jacksonville for the for the um preliminary round and then Austin Texas for for the NCAA championship not much of a time zone difference an hour um so I think it all um, is an advantage if you, from a coaching point of view, um, as I'm, as I'm looking at training and, and what we need to accomplish. And, and at that time of year, just coming off of exams and, and everything like that. So I think it's good. I know that at the top, we talked about, I talked, asked about Renaya Jones's, you know, impact on our program with the big contributions she's made, but I want to ask, who do you think is is an, a more of an underrated athlete, at least in the eyes of people that follow this team, that is in store for a really big year. What, and can you, if you can talk about one return, like one returner and one freshman? Um, I think an underrated person that will probably have a breakout year for this year is Kaya Williams in the 400. Watching her train this year, um, I think she's on a mission. I think she'll have a, a really good year. She finished second at the conference last year. Um, um, so it, it'll, it'll be interesting. And I, I look forward to seeing what she can accomplish. Um, as far as, um, freshmen, I only have one. And right now, um, she's on the, um, on the, on the, uh, injured reserve list right now. So it's hard to speak about that, but, um, I think there'll be others that will step up. I, I, you know, it, it's one of those things where you watch in the fall and you see some things, um, you know, like I said, we have a couple transfer students, so we'll see who will, um, make their way into the limelight, but I think there'll be others that are going to step up this year. What is the biggest team, the thing that you want your team to get out of this season? I want them to understand um, that it's going to be harder this time around. You know, it's one thing when no one expects you to win because last year indoor, if you remember, the announcers didn't even realize we were in for a team championship until the four by four. That was the first time they mentioned mentioned UCF. Um, and now when you won, you're the defending champions and it's a different, uh, it's a different type of expectation and a different type of pressure. So, but we can't focus on anyone else. We just have to focus on what we um are able to do. And that's the message is focus on, on you and take care of your business. And ultimately, hopefully those things will work, work themselves out and we'll be in the position that we want to be in, awesome. but take it. 
that very true well th thank you very much coach for joining me best best of luck this season and uh good luck in Gainesville to open it thank you appreciate it go Knights.